hey, so are you a photographer with no self-control and you have a bunch of unfinished projects and you're looking to start a new one? Well, why not join me on this journey on learning how to shoot film? <laughs> hey, cue the mandatory lo-fi, let's get into this video. Alright, so to lay out from the beginning of this video, what I want to do is I want to show the perspective of someone shooting from digital to medium format film. But Brian, you might be wondering, why not start with 35 millimeter? And that's because medium format film is objectively better than 35 millimeter. And if you think otherwise, you're wrong. <laughs> no, the reason why I started with medium format is because I feel like there's a larger difference between medium format and digital than there is between the 35 mil and digital. And so I wanted something completely different, something that come just rip me out of my comfort zone because I feel nothing these days and I need a little excitement in my life. <laughs> but yeah, so I just kind of want to show you from the very beginning what I had to do, the shooting process and everything that goes from there. So I just started out with what most people start out with and I have a few rolls of Portra 400 and a few rolls of T-Max 400 so I can get a little bit used to both black and white and color negative film. And the cameras that we're going to be shooting on are the Mamiya 645 and the Mamiya RB67. Have you seen those cameras? <laughs> right, I need a little more structure to this video. So to kind of give a reference of my background with photography, here are a few of my favorite photos that I've taken with my Sony a7 III. shutter release sound <laughs> all right that way you can kind of see the difference between what my digital photos look like and to what my film photos will be shit i left the lens cap on oh, there's a viewfinder there we go now i look like a film photographer why is this one purple Hey, <laughs> hi from the future. So it's been about two months that I've been shooting with these cameras and I've decided that it's better if I do it in this format rather than learning along. Why? Uh, let's just say things have been a little bit wild. Anyways, I kind of just want to talk about the things that I've learned, the differences that I've learned between film and digital and how this has all helped me in my journey of photography. So I've been shooting with these bad boys for about two whole months now. And I gotta say, I am absolutely in love. I will never stop shooting film. It's amazing. <laughs> but it doesn't mean there's a lot of problems that I have with shooting film that I don't enjoy. So let's get to it. So first thing that I want to point out is all the cliches are true. The fact that you start shooting a lot slower, you start thinking about each and every frame that you're going to take and that you have existential anxiety that you've wasted a shot and that that's never going to go away and that's money that's down the drain is all there. <laughs> But in all seriousness, yes, and the whole fact that you're shooting with something entirely mechanical, like self-sustained, is also really cool. You don't need to depend on batteries or anything of the sort. And just shooting and handling this thing feels a lot of fun. Check, look, look at the sounds that it makes. Hold on. <sighs> so good. So that one shot was like $5 on the drain. <laughs> I'm obviously kidding, I can always retake that shot. But yes, the medium itself is a whole experience. The way you have to handle and shoot with these cameras is very different than with digital. The whole thing where you're very nonchalant with your digital camera, you can just go and fire away and you have like a thousand shots in your SD card, doesn't feel the same anymore. Whenever you're taking and shooting film, and you go and you get your, your negatives uh, scanned and you get them back, you edit them and you get that one really amazing shot that you just love, it makes it all the more rewarding and a lot better.
Whoa, okay. So you might be wondering really quick, what happened in this photo over here? So, as I said before, there are a few things about film that I just don't really like. And one of those things being the number of things that can go wrong. For example, one, I accidentally cut this photo. <laughs> as I was loading it in the tank, I was a little anxious and I just cut too deep. No problem, whatever. Second thing, turns out, I may have mixed my chemicals a little bit incorrectly. I'm not sure. I'm still talking to Sinistil still about it, but for some reason, about like six to almost every roll that I've developed has come out purple. And I'm not talking about the photos. I mean, the negative itself is purple when they shouldn't be. This is just what the raw looks like. Just straight scan, nothing put onto it. Just pure negative, right? So whenever I try to color correct it and look like a normal photo, this is what it looks like. And this is probably about as close as I can get it. And I've searched online and I can't find anybody else that's facing the same struggles that I am with this. So if you know why this is happening, let me know. I'm following all the rules correctly. I have a sous vide cooker to keep it at the right temperature. I'm agitating every 30 seconds. I just have no idea what's going on and I'm just slowly figuring out what it is and why the film is purple when it shouldn't be. But yes, this would probably have to be the thing that I dislike the most about film in that there's a million things that can go wrong and you have no idea as to what it could be. It could be the developing, it could be multiple little things in the developing, it could be your camera, it could be the lens itself, it could be that you underexposed it too much, it could be... A multitude of things that could show that could have a bad photo and you won't know until you waste roll after roll after roll to find out what it is but despite all that I still love film Hold on, dude, my hair wasn't this long. Hold on, hold on. Why is it 2021? What the? So yeah, it's now January and I've been shooting film for a little bit less than half a year now. And at this point, I can confidently say that I highly prefer to shoot film than I do digital. I mean, don't get me wrong. I still shoot with my Sony every now and then, but if I get the option to, I'm always going to pick my film cameras over my Sony camera. But with that being the case, I am a little bit embarrassed to admit that even though I've been shooting a lot of film, I haven't exactly been developing a lot of film. I'm still facing certain struggles and I've sent a few roles to be developed by Linus and his camera. I still have a bunch stocked up because I just don't feel that comfortable in shipping them out. I've become so obsessed with film that I've even started collecting different types of cameras and then shooting on different rolls of film. I'm branching out more than what I originally thought I was going to do. I've even shot a few rolls on my Nishika 8000, which was an interesting experience. Uh, and I even just acquired a Minolta to be my dedicated 35mm camera, even though it is an inferior form of shooting film. <laughs> Above all else, I've decided to throw away more money just so I can start shooting on Super 8, so. I still have to figure out how to use this thing though. But what does all this mean? What was the whole point of making this video and starting my journey with film? What have I learned from it? 
to kind of start off, I've learned that it's fun, addicting, but also really expensive. I kind of feel like I'm an alcoholic, constantly needing my next shot. I'm walking around just like, dude, I just need a, I just one shot, please, bro, just, just buy me a shot. I just need a shot, dude, please, just one shot. <laughs> But more than that, shooting film is like shooting digital, but with attitude. It just hits different. Shout out to my trash taste boys. I know by this point, I really hammered in the actual feeling of shooting the cameras themselves, but I'm also kind of talking about the photos and the results that you get from them as well. There's something about the emotions that come behind the photos. They have a bit more sentiment and personality to them than digital does. I never really understood what people meant by the film look until I started to shoot film myself. So for example, let's take a shot on film and put it next to a shot on digital. Something that I can distinctly see immediately is just how sharp and crisp and incredibly accurate the digital photos look. And it's its own style in a way, but sometimes it just isn't fitting for what I'm looking for. Because when you look at the softer and moodier emulsion from a film photo, comboed with the sensation of how it was shot, you can really start to realize the subtle difference that each can provide. And I don't want to make it seem that, oh, just because it's shot on film, it's immediately a better photo. I actually actively disagree with that argument. I've seen some people take some shit shots on film and people rave about it because it was shot on film. What I'm trying to say is that doesn't take away from the personality that goes with the extra tedium in having to shoot film. Maybe it's just in my head and the way I'm looking at it, but something about the little extra effort and the things that you have to do in order to get a film shot adds a little bit more personality and a little more personal value to the photo. So maybe it doesn't make it objectively a better photo, but emotion wise, you can feel a little more connected to it is what I'm trying to say. I know earlier in the video I stated how much I kind of don't like the amount of things that can go wrong whenever you're shooting film and I still stand by that I'm not a big fan of it but there are some times where you can get a little happy accident and make it enhance the photo instead and they feel a little more organic than whenever they happen on a digital sensor for example take a look at this photo and kind of notice the weird odd white streaks that are on it those streaks came out on the entire roll and I couldn't exactly figure out why and nor could the person that I had sent it to get it developed but upon looking at the photo a bit more, I really like what it adds to it. It gives it a more artistic feel in both the literal and metaphorical sense in this case. Or for example, look at these photos that I used to test out some old chemicals. By standard photo rules, they're awful. They don't look great at all. But I still kind of like them in a different way. I can't really explain it. They give me a synth wavy vibe, but I don't know. I'm kind of cool. This video has been going on long enough and in order to end things i just want to once again say i love film i love it so much and i don't see myself ever stopping shooting under this medium i feel like it's already made me such a better photographer and it's only helped me realize that i have a long way to go before i can call myself the best photographer in the world but other than that thank you for watching and i'll see you next time